Hi, and welcome back to another 13 Cubed short. In this episode, we're going to take a look at some free tools from Magnet Forensics. If you've spent any time working in the DFIR field, you're likely already familiar with this company, and perhaps you're already a customer. For the rest of you, Magnet Forensics is a Canadian-based firm founded in 2011. Their flagship products are Axiom, Internet Evidence Finder, or IEF, and Atlas but they also develop other software, including those aforementioned free tools. As a side note, this video is not sponsored or endorsed by the company, and I have no official relationship with them. I've been a customer and have used their products since 2014, and thought it would be useful to share some of these free offerings with the community. If there's any interest in exploring their commercial tools, let me know in the comments below, and I'll consider doing so in a future episode. In the next section, we're going to take a look at four tools, and they are Magnet RAM Capture, which as the name implies, allows you to capture the contents of physical memory from a Windows computer system. Of course, there are plenty of tools in the market that allow us to do this, but we'll take a look at Magnet's entry in this space. Then we'll take a look at Magnet Process Capture, which allows you to capture memory from individual running processes. Then we'll take a look at Web Page Saver, which takes a list of URLs and saves scrolling captures or snapshots of each web page, which is pretty neat. And then lastly, we'll take a look at Encrypted Disk Detector, which is a command line tool that can quickly and non-intrusively check for encrypted volumes on a computer system during live incident response. We'll talk more about why that's important when we get to that tool. So let's go ahead and hop over to a Windows 10 VM and get started. Okay, let's go ahead and launch Magnet RAM Capture. We'll say yes to the UAC prompt, and then of course we'll accept the license agreement. And you'll notice that the interface is very sparse. We can choose a segment size if we want to segment the file. In this case, I do not, so I'm going to leave it at the default of Don't Split. We'll click Browse, and then I'll just call this MemDump for the name of the memory capture, and click Save. And in the bottom right of the dialog, you'll notice that it says we're about to capture nine gigs or so of system memory. So this ends up taking several minutes to run, but of course I sped up this section so you don't have to sit there and wait on it. And when it's complete, we'll get a nice little dialog box telling us that the RAM was successfully saved to that specified file. And that's all there is to it. Nothing special here, but it is a fully functional RAM capture tool. So next up, let's take a look at Magnet Process Capture. Once again, we'll accept the UAC prompt. And here you'll notice a list of the processes that have been enumerated from the running system. We can uncheck all or check all. By default, they're all checked. And here you see all of those different processes and PIDs. Let's go ahead and assume that there is one in particular that is evil or at least suspicious and that we want to dump the process memory for that process. So I'll choose this SVC host PID 1012. We'll select an output folder of the desktop. I can optionally turn on monitor mode. In this mode, we can continuously capture memory every X seconds, but I'll go ahead and leave that off right now. And then we can optionally choose zip output to output the process to a password protected zip file. Again, I'll leave that option off, which is the default. So that's pretty much it. If I click start, we'll end up capturing the process memory for that single checked process. And then we can then take that memory capture and analyze it as we would any other memory capture from a process. So that's all there is to this particular program. Again, very useful tool. So let's go ahead and close this and check out our next tool. And that would be Web Page Saver. So here we can click Add URLs and we can add manually a single URL, which is in this case 13cube.com, but I can also import a list of URLs from a text file or a CSV file. We'll go ahead and click OK. Now let's look at our options. You'll notice we can save web pages to any one of four formats. I'll choose PNG here. We can optionally select the logo and then also include a report title, which I'll simply call 13 cubed. So that's pretty much it for the options. Click OK. And then we will click Start. Once again, we'll save it to the desktop. 
and operation complete. At this point, we'll have a nice folder on the desktop called WPS a date and timestamp. Within it, we have a WPS report.htm file. And if we open that, on the left side, you'll notice the URL, 13cube.com. And when I click on it, we'll see this nice scrolling PNG file, which is the entire website captured in a single image. So very, very handy and extremely easy to use just like our other tools. So that's Web Page Saver. So let's go ahead and close this and look at our last tool, which is EDD or Encrypted Disk Detector. Now I have mounted a VeraCrypt volume on this virtual machine just to give us something to look at. Go ahead and accept the agreement. And in yellow, you'll notice it says Drive J appears to be a virtual disk, possibly a TrueCrypt or PGP encrypted volume. And then in red, we see encrypted volumes and or processes were detected by EDD. So obviously when we're doing live incident response, first thing we're going to do is capture memory and then we'll likely create a triage image, hopefully with CAPE. If you haven't watched Introduction to CAPE, definitely take a look at that episode. But once we've done that, if we do run EDD and find that there are encrypted volumes that are mounted, we are very likely going to want to save the contents of those volumes before we power off the system. Because once we power them off, they will be in an encrypted state and unreadable. So again, that would be a very important thing to look for during our incident response. So that's pretty much it for these four tools. Again, they're all extremely easy to use, extremely simple interfaces, and I hope you found them useful. As I mentioned in the intro, if there are other commercial tools from Magnet Forensics that you would like me to consider reviewing, please do let me know. I hope you enjoyed this 13 cube short, and I'll catch you in the next one.